Hi guys and welcome to this, the Mongol blocking time lapse. Uh, and this is concept art based on concept art by Danny McGillick. He's a great concept artist. Check him out. I'll put the link up on the screen and in the comments so you can click on it and find it, uh, find his stuff. Uh, I really love this guy. He's a, a lovely, simple character. He's got a unique personality. He's going to look great running around. So uh, kind of the point of this model uh, is that he's going to be moving and animating around. This is not just a standard ZBrush sculpt that you see on ArtStation that just sort of sits there and looks pretty. This is going to be a real life character. Hopefully uh, I might give him out to my subscribers so they can have a play around with him once he's finished. Might take a little while. I've got a lot on my plate, a lot of tutorials and things to make. Uh, it's currently getting deep into skinning and doing all the skinning things on the page, but this is this is polygon blocking, so I, I focus a lot on this in the site, and there's a lot of tutorials about breaking down each tool and what it does and how you use it with the hotkeys, so one of the things that I like to do is give out all these hotkeys, so it's taken me a long time to, to work out the best and most efficient workflows in Maya in order to get the best results out of it and, you know, work fast. So uh, a fast artist is um, an artist who can charge a lot of money, so... I like to be fast, and uh, and besides, it's just fun when you're doing fast stuff. Uh, I want to build short films. I'm quite a greedy artist. I want to build short films all by myself, so I'm sort of training myself up to do that, and I've learned scripting uh, in order to, to to maximize that. Teamed up with some great scripters like uh, Dave Sparrow. Um, he's been working on Zoo Tools, and uh, taking over from Hamish McKenzie, who's an old, real old school Maya guy. Um, who built a fantastic set of tools. So we've taken that over and uh, we give all these out on the site. Just to focus back on this, because, you know, I, I like to talk, but we are actually building something here. Um, the main thing about doing this stuff is to start with primitive objects and then block it out. Now, what I've found is that most people, most beginners at least, and everyone on the web seems to think that uh, that that box modeling rules supreme in Polygon modeling and I just disagree I flat out disagree I don't I don't, I don't think it's a good way to model uh, when I started teaching my students that sort of scenario they they produce really lumpy very ugly looking models now what you really want to get is you really want to get these basic forms and realize that with these basic building blocks you can create complexity I mean and you want to start breaking down these these seemingly complicated shapes and seeing how they're just simple objects and really training your eye to go, well, is what is that exactly? Is that just a tube that's going around in his hat? Or is that just a sphere that's a little bit, you know, pushed in one area? Um, or is that just a sphere for a helmet that's literally a sphere that doesn't have any, it's a really simple shapes. And these simpler the shapes that you can make, uh, in many ways, sometimes you want to put those little finessey details on, uh, the, the more appealing your characters can look. And this even goes right up into the, the really, you know, muscly, muscly characters and orcs and dragons and, and things like that that have lots of detail. Underlying those forms, if you look, and I, I take my students, I go to Pinterest, it's these simple shapes that un underlie um, all the complexity. And when this guy's finished, he's going to have a lot of detail on him. He's going to have a lot of textures. He might do a little bit of displacement. He's going to have some fur. He's going to have some stitching uh, on all the things. He's got these little... Uh, little armor things that hang off him, um, lots of little pieces. So this this guy might end up being quite complicated, but the basic basic forms are really just these simple shapes. They're just and that's what you really want to start training your eye as much as possible when you're looking at artwork on the web or in Pinterest or uh, on ArtStation or wherever the hell you're looking at artwork. Uh, you want to start seeing seeing the forms and breaking them down into the simple elements and seeing how they connect together. The hands here are a good one. You know, look how easy those those hands, those fingers are. They're just six sided six sided polygon tubes uh, with a little bit of bridging and stuff in the end just to connect them up. Uh, duplicating that hand out, uh, isolate, selecting it, and then making a little bit of armor, a little bit of leather leather armor for him. There, there's an armor for his. So reusing objects that you've already got. Uh, there's another reuse, 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 reuse. Duplicate is, is our best friend. Uh, and then we've got uh, different ways of making shapes. So that's stuff starting with the plane. So that's another way of building that sort of a shape and then extruding it down and making it fatter uh, there. I believe I even come into the history somewhere here and make it a bit fatter there. It happened very quickly. 
Um, so remember, I'm not modeling this fast. And I, what I will do is uh, with the Robo tutorial, I, I, I go through the whole process of making and animating and doing compositing and rigging and everything on a character. Um, and it takes about 20 hours. So that's all on the site. And what I'm going to do is release the first hour, which is th this hour of doing uh, the block. So if you uh, if you do have the time and you and you like to watch long tutorials and, and, and figure out all the details, and I've found this is especially so with beginners, um, the pros will just go, oh yeah, I see what he's doing. Um, the the beginners, you guys uh, might find it handy to go to and watch that one, so I'll, I'll upload that hopefully early next week, but don't quote me on that. I've got to get my computer back. It's in the shop at the moment with all my data on it, so I'm, I'm hoping that nothing's happened there, but it doesn't matter because the videos are done, so it will be up. Uh, the videos are on Vimeo already, so uh, that will be up, and you'll be able to see this process without me sort of yabbering, and I'll be talking exactly about what I'm doing and how I'm thinking about the shapes and stuff like that, just on a on a robotic sort of a character, nice cartoony character as well. So I do recommend to do um, very simple characters. What I've found is that I've I've been all excited, and I, I get into all these muscle characters at first. You'll, you go back and search for Andrew Silk, tough guy and stuff like that. That's where I started but when I came back out of the industry. I was like, wow, I can do all this cool stuff. And then I noticed this, my students were just trying to copy me doing that stuff and they were being very unsuccessful with it. And what I noticed is any of those sculpting characters uh, that people have done, they very rarely ever move. And I could never get my students to get them to animate. And I'm an animator, I'm a filmmaker. We want this stuff to move. That is what the industry is all about, by the way, is moving images. It's not about stills. Um, the, every, every, all the Where all the money is, is in moving images, films, games, TV shows. Uh, that's where people get paid doing this stuff. Um, and so you want to you want to be what's called a production modeler, and that's someone who can make stuff so that it will move. You don't have to be the guy who makes it move, but you do have to know how to do this. It's a really um, it's like eating your vegetables. Unfortunately, when you when you uh, you know addicted to ZBrush, um, it's just a reality of how the the world works. Like these these companies that are huge, these big I ILM type companies and stuff, they they've got a few ZBrush guys, but they've got more Maya guys usually. Um, so just putting some lights in there, just using the standard directional lights, couple for fill. I think I delete them and put an IBL. So just switch on Arnold really quickly there, put a, a sky dome in. It works in the viewport just for fill light, uh, which is cool. Just a directional, put an AI standard on. That's just Arnold's main shader there. And we can tweak it and it's got Fresnel and stuff like that. You can do reflections with roughness in the viewport. So I'm really digging that these days. That's cool. I love how the technology keeps getting better and better with that all real time. But uh, just to, to show you to come in here and uh, load up Arnold and we'll just have a zoom around in Arnold as well. Just something really, really super basic scene. It's, uh, it's not looking anything great. I'm, I'm more of a re redshift and a Renaman guy, but I will be doing some Arnold training as well. It's a beautiful little... Uh, renderer that comes free with Maya now. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe and check out the site for a lot more information like this, but I'll be sure to keep trying to pump out these videos for you guys. Uh, so enjoy.